Good evening, guys. This is Brother Kyle Williams with uh, Agape Fellowship Church, and uh, I just wanted to get on here and do a live video for our uh, for our Wednesday night impact service. Um, I'm going to give some people a minute or two to get on here and uh, view. Um, tune into this um, because I'm going to make some announcements about upcoming services this week and um, we're going to get into um, sanctification from the Baptist Catechism so um, I see somebody is on here with me it looks like Susan is it um, I can't tell the picture is pretty small but um, Let's see, I've got a couple people on here now. So praise God. I hope you all are doing well. Um, I'm feeling um, a little icky. Not really, uh, not thinking it's COVID. I think I just have a cold. And uh, we're certainly praying for those in our church that have struggled with illnesses this week. Um, Pastor Kevin, as you know, has tested positive for COVID, and Hadassah, his daughter, has tested positive. So, uh, we're just lifting up the O'Connor family in prayer, and, uh, so I see I have three people on here now. Praise God. See if I can do this without me messing anything up, but, okay, um. But anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started, um, and I apologize if you come in on the middle of this video. Um, you can rewatch it from the beginning, I'll post it as soon as I'm done. Um, I'm here, um, just want to make a few quick announcements, uh, but first I want to pray for you guys that are watching so let's go to the lord in prayer great god of heaven lord we thank you today for your grace and for your sustaining mercy that go with us each day father your hand is on each one of these now as our church is suffering this time of illness and this time of separation from fellowship with one another. Father, I just pray that you would sustain um, our church members' bodies. I pray that you would sustain their spirits by your word. Uphold them, God, with your righteous right hand. You are the comforter. You are the healer. You are our strength. And you are our surety. And we look to you, God, to do all, um, all that we need for the health and the nourishment of our bodies. Lord, I pray that you strengthen us. Father, I pray that as I read from your word tonight and I teach your people, I pray that they would ed be edified. I pray that they would be built up in their most holy faith. And I pray, Father, that they would look to you and that they would trust Christ in all that they do. Father, I ask you to bless our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I got, it says four people on here. Hey, brother, uh, I see that uh, Kevin has commented on here, so that's good for, good to see him on here. I'm glad, glad to see a few people on here. I just pray that uh, everybody gets a chance to catch this and, uh, Share it with the ones who um, may not be on Facebook. I don't know how you'll go about doing that, but if it can be done, please do so. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm coughing and sneezing, so if I do that in excess tonight, uh, please look past that. Um, without much further ado, let's introduce our topic for this evening. Um, as you'll see, I've titled the video, 
I have titled my video um, Baptist Catechism Question 38 of Sanctification. And that's going to be our topic tonight. But first I want to read a passage from the scriptures and then we'll go into um, why this is important. And then we'll go into the question, we'll discuss it, and we will close. Um, all righty. If you have your Bibles and you would like to follow along with me, I will be starting out in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Chapter 4, starting at verse 1. 1 Thessalonians. I'll give everybody just a minute to turn there, and then I'll read. This is the Word of God. Furthermore, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we give you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is an avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed do it towards all the brethren which are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business. And to work with your own hands as we commanded you. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without. That ye may have lack of nothing. So that's our scripture, and just for those of you that are just logging on and just getting on here, that is 1 Thessalonians, verse 1 through 12. We are definitely keeping Teresa in our prayers. Thank you, Susan, for keeping us updated. Question 38 in the Baptist Catechism. Um, and we've actually been going through this Baptist Catechism in our Sunday morning services. Um, Kevin and I decided some time back that uh, it was a, a good, right, and proper and edifying thing to do for us to go through this Catechism uh, together. And I, um, and I think it's important because our biblical, our level of biblical knowledge has suffered in this day. Um, back years ago, back when this catechism was written, this was a common thing. This was taught to... Um, all people seeking entrance into the church. It was taught to children and family worship. The Baptist Catechism was read by virtually all Baptists um, in private, family, and corporate worship. It has been a staple for over uh, for nearly 500 years in Baptist life, and um, we thought that it would be needful to go over these things with our congregation that we might instruct you guys in the scriptures and in the doctrinal consensus of the church. So, we start with question 38 in the 
Baptist Catechism tonight. And the question is, what is sanctification? Sanctification, the Catechism answers, is the work of God's free grace, whereby we are renewed in the whole man after the image of God and are enabled more and more to die unto sin and live unto righteousness. Sanctification is the work of God's free grace. As you'll know, if you've been um, in our um, at church, and I think we've been recording this portion of our services every morning before the call to worship. We every Sunday morning before the call to worship, we go over a catechism question and we discuss it. And we, two weeks ago, <coughs> discussed question 36, what is justification? And we read, justification is an act of God's free grace. And then question 37, last Sunday, what is adoption? Question 37, adoption is an act of God's free grace. So now we get here to question 38 of sanctification. And what is sanctification? Sanctification is the work of God's free grace. And so notice that all of these benefits, the catechism calls these benefits that the elect in Christ do receive in this life justification, adoption, and sanctification are all entirely of God's free grace. Now that grace is the same grace that we are justified by. Right? Ephesians 2, 8 By grace have you been saved through faith. Verse 9, that not of yourself, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God, right? Um, salvation, grace, and faith are collectively the gift of God. And so we receive that grace, and through that grace, we receive these benefits. Justification, the adoption as sons, and sanctification. So, it, it all stems from God's free grace. The grace that justifies you before God, the grace that saves your soul and reconciles you to God, is the, the self-same grace by which Christ, the Spirit of Christ working in us, sanctifies us. It is the work of of God's free grace. There is no distinction in grace, in the grace of sanctification, and in the grace of justification. The same grace is working. I want you to note that. If you're taking notes, I want you to note that. Because we have a distorted idea, and I, know, and I already know this is going to go longer than I planned, and I apologize for that. And if you have to leave and come back and watch later, I understand. But sanctification as an act, as a work of God's free grace takes place out of the very same grace that justifies us. So, that being said, we cannot act as if though justification is absolutely imperative to our eternal salvation and sanctification is just this addendum just this optional thing for super spiritual christians to go through i want you to hear me and i want you to hear me clearly if you are in christ christ by his grace god by his grace, the mercy of Christ Jesus, he is sanctifying you. 
I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And starting in verse 28. This is a very familiar text. Um, we quote it all the time. We go over it. We've been going over Romans 8 at our Tuesday night Bible studies. And so this should be a very familiar text to all of us. Verse 28. And we know that God... And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, <coughs> them he also called. And whom he called, them also he justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. This is often called the golden chain of redemption. And this chain, if we were to read on down later where Paul says in verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The idea here is that this golden chain, as the theologians have come to call it over the years, cannot be broken. There is absolutely nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. As I was telling um, a couple people last night at our Bible study, I don't know if there is a better text in the Bible to read if you're going through hardship, sickness, or on your deathbed. I don't know of a better text in the Bible that can prepare a Christian to die and die with joy than this because death can't separate us life can't separate us the trials of life certainly can't separate us nor angels nor principality nor power nor things present nor things to come nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord so they make it very plain that this golden chain cannot be broken so I read verse 28 and verse 29. Here's that golden chain. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. Well, wait a minute. That doesn't say sanctification in there or does it well if it doesn't then you have to explain to me what it means when it says that God predestinated though those he foreknew to be conformed to the image of his son that is sanctification Sanctification at its root, etymologically, um, meaning in the breakdown of the word, means to make holy. The, the first part of it, sanct, S-A-N-C-T, uh, comes from the Latin sanctus, which means holy. Um, if you've ever read any um, Latin theological works, you'll hear about um, the uh, Spiritus Sanctus, it's a liturgical prayer um, in the Catholic Church, and it is, uh, that Sanctus is holy. So, this word sanctified means to make holy, 
or to make righteous. Now, justification that we covered before this, justification is where we are declared righteous by the act of God, an act of God's free grace. We are justified and declared righteous before the Father by the righteousness of Christ. This sanctification is a holy making. He is making us holy. I want you to notice the Baptist Catechism's emphasis on the work of God in sanctification. Sanctification is the work of God's free grace. So, this is the work of God's free grace. And what does this work of God do? Whereby we are renewed in the whole man after the image of God. We are renewed in the whole man. We could take a look at Romans chapter 5 <coughs> and talk about um, Romans 5, 12. Um, As in one man, the many became sinners so in, so by one man, many will be called righteous. Many will be made righteous. Um, we, we could talk about, um, you know, the fall. Genesis chapter 3, talking about the curse of the fall that came upon all mankind, all of creation, that, you know, is fallen in Adam. And in Christ, everything that was destroyed and undone in Adam is being restored through Christ. So in sanctification, which is the work of God's free grace, we are renewed in the whole man after the image of God that had been marred in us by the presence of sin. Because even though we are we were created, man was created in the image of God. Sin has so distorted that image in us that that image needs to be renewed. Well, guess what? Those whom he predestinates to be conformed to the image of his son, he is doing this work in us. But, he is not doing this work for us. He is doing it in us. He is not doing it for us. If you still have your Bible opened up to Romans chapter 8, I want you to look back with me to verse 11. Romans 8 verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And you could look before that. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And that life because of righteousness that is from God through Jesus, in Jesus Christ if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised Christ from the dead, God the Father, isn't that what the Bible says? He was raised by God the Father. He shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So a lot of people take this text to be talking about your physical body, your physical nature, healing. And I suggest that this is talking about, since this whole section of Romans, this whole chapter of Romans really is talking about life as a spirit indwelt, uh, purchased child of God, then this is talking about our sanctification. He quickens our mortal bodies. He gives life 
that is what quicken means, to give life to our mortal bodies by his spirit. That what? That we may walk out and do those things that he's working out in us. It says in verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So this is talking about working our sanctification out in us. After we're renewed in that whole man, and we are, the Baptist Catechism says, we are enabled more and more to die unto sin and to live unto righteousness. I want you to turn back with me to Romans chapter 6, and then we'll wrap up. I know I said I wanted to keep this brief, and um, I still want to. Romans chapter 6, verses 4 and 6. Well, we'll start at verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were, bar were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That is like as that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we had been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ has been raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin, therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey its lust. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Brings it back full circle, doesn't it? What is sanctification? It is an act of God's free grace. We are not under the law. We are not under the dominion of sin, right? What did the law do? By the law, our sin became evident to us. The law is a death knell to anyone. It says that you are not righteous. You have no power to make yourself righteous. You need someone to make you holy. And it's an act of God's free grace. We are under grace. We are not under the dominion of sin, but under the dominion of God. And we are enabled, really enabled to do this, to put sin to death. There, likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Die more and more to sin and live unto righteousness. That is what sanctification is. We are enabled by the grace of God more and more to die unto sin and live unto righteousness as God makes us holy, and conforms us, actually conforms us to the image of his son, right? We are good Calvinists. We believe that what God said he will do, he's going to bring it to completion. He 
this is the sure thing, those whom he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, he justified, he glorified, and that transformation into the likeness of his son is our sanctification. It is the will of God, and God has no unfulfilled desires. So, be sure of this one thing, brothers and sisters. If you are in Christ, you are being sanctified. God is working this out in you. God wants to work this in you. And he, and you will see the fruit of it when he works this out in you. I want you to be encouraged by this. I don't want... Um, we have a tendency to think of uh, sanctification is something that is heavy, as a burden that is laid upon us. Oh, I have to be sanctified. And yes, it hurts the flesh. It is absolutely painful to our flesh. But it is beautiful in that God is conforming us to the image of his son. So, um, I just want to hang out for just a second and ask if anybody has any questions, comments, prayer requests, and then I want to close. All right. Father God, we thank you for your word and your spirit that does so perfectly work together to sanctify us and to conform us to the image of Christ. Father God, that we may serve you with all of our lives, that we may be of use. Father, you have set us apart as holy for your service. And we pray for the grace more and more to be to reckon ourselves <coughs> dead unto sin and alive to God. To serve him without fear of condemnation, but with a joyful evangelical obedience. That we would render this up to you freely as our reasonable sacrifice. Father God, I I pray for those that are um, impacted right now by COVID. Father, I lift up Brother Kevin to you and his daughter, Hadassah, Lord. We uh, pray that you would um, make them well, Father, that you would sustain them through this sickness. Father, I pray for Teresa. Lord, I, I, I know that um, this COVID is tough. It's a, it's a booger to deal with. Lord, we just, we pray, Father, that you would um, strengthen their bodies, give life to their bodies, and sustain them through this time. And Father, through this, draw them closer to yourselves. Draw them into your word. Um, draw them into prayer, Father, into fellowship with you. Father, we desire that... Um, you would um, be with each one of these and you know all the needs of those out there. Father, I pray that you be with your people today that as they grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would strengthen each one of them in their walk, Lord, in their resolve to live for you and to die into sin. For the death that you've died, you died once into sin. Lord, that we may, that as we're crucified with you, we will die more and more to it each day. Father, we love you and we praise you for grace today. And we pray that you would keep each one of you safe until we're able to meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, God, just real quick announcement because I, I don't remember if I repeated it at the beginning. We are... We are um, kind of moment to moment with whether we're going to have service Sunday because of all the sickness. 
Um, I am feeling a little under the weather right now, but I'm going to keep an eye on my symptoms and um, maybe get tested if this gets worse and we'll see how it goes. And we should have a decision by Friday night, Saturday morning at the latest on whether we're having church Sunday. But in the event that we do, I think that it is wise if we just do a morning service that morning and um, uh, forego the fellowship meal this week. I know we enjoy them. We enjoy the time we get to have together. But I just think with the thickness going around in our homes, um, maybe it's a good idea if we forego that this week. So um, be in prayer for your church. Uh, be in prayer for the families in our church. And again, if any of you guys, uh, members of our church or otherwise, uh, if there's anything that Agape Fellowship Church can do, uh, reach out to us. Reach out to me, uh, Brother Kevin's under the weather right now, but you can reach out to him as well and let us know how we can be praying for you. Um, thank you for tuning in and God bless.